Okay, good morning, traders. Welcome to another edition of Technical Talk. My name's Aaron Hill, and time is now 8.53 a.m. GMT. It's been quite a start in the financial markets. Uh, look, uh, overnight, we've seen the, as you can see on the screen, you should be able to see on the screen. Just bear with me while it, lo while it loads. Um, look, Asia Equity Indexes, it did close lower overnight. Just bear with me a minute, guys. Sorry about this. Okay. So look, as you can see, Asia equity indexes, uh, cash equity indexes closed lower overnight. Um, look, the Nikkei 225 is that, uh, ended lower by uh, uh, 3%. South Korea's Kospi down 2.3%. And Australia's ASX 200 was down by 1%. Look, the European cash equity markets is also... God, look at the numbers. It's considerably underwater right now. Um, right now, Euro stocks 50 is down 4%. Uh, FTSE 100 out of the UK is down 2.5%. Germany's DAX is down 4.5%. France's CAC uh, 40 is down 4.3%. Uh, now, look, uh, in, in terms of the in, uh, US equity index futures, we're also lower across the board. Uh, Dow Jones futures, as you can see, 1.8%. S&P 500 futures down 1.9%. And the same for NASDAQ uh, 100 futures. Look, guys, the big news this morning, of course, is the, um, the US weighing on acting without ally allies or on the banning of Russian oil imports. Now, with oil, I've, I'll be showing the oil chart in a few seconds, but oil prices have surged this morning. Now, we also have oil traders betting prices may uh, 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 surpass the $200 barrel mark, a uh, barrel mark, sorry, this month. Um, look, so uh, also we, we I also read recently, uh, just, just saw wheat futures are trading limit up yet again, um, uh, you know, up 7% 7, 7 this morning. Oil prices actually surged 20%, um, I think it was, 20% in early trading um, on talks of a US oil ban. As you know, look, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm sure most of us have seen the news. Russia has stepped up the shelling of civilian areas. Um, it is causing absolute chaos across the financial markets right now. So look, just really quickly, uh, in terms of safe haven currencies, as you would expect, oh, it's pretty, it's pretty even actually. But I mean, look, the Japanese yen is higher as traders weighing weigh in on safe haven markets. Now, you would expect Aussie dollar stretch. Um, uh, you would expect Aussie dollar weakness actually, given the risk sensitive uh, um, uh, uh, play right now, given the global equities are lower. But we are seeing strength in the risk sensitive currencies at the moment. Now, in terms of cryptos, really quickly. Uh, we are seeing lower prices uh, uh, right now. So look, Bitcoin, uh, as you can see, is down 2.7%. Ethereum against the US dollar is down 4%. Litecoin down 3.7%. Uh, down and uh, Ripple down by half a percent. So look, the big news, of course, is the, uh, um, is the US oil ban. Uh, 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 US oil ban as Russia, as, as I said, steps up uh, shelling. Uh, look, there was, a, there was a, a document I read that JP Morgan actually uh, predicted, um, uh, just bear with me, uh, actually uh, 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 said last week that Brent crude, now Brent crude is the international benchmark, is considered the international benchmark for oil prices, could end uh, the year this year at $185 a barrel should Russian supplies continue to be disrupted. Uh, while Australia and New Zealand uh, banking saw around 5 million barrels a day of pipeline and seaborne oil supplies being impacted by new sanctions. Now, where does this leave us? So look, just really quickly in terms of the economic events uh, this week, look, attention is largely on Thursday, on Thursday's um, uh, 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 events. We have the uh, US inflation. US inflation coming out. So for the year on year, we are expecting, well, it's anticipated that we will increase by an eye popping 7.9% uh, for year on year inflation for the US CPI. And for the core reading, we, we're expecting um, a 5.9% reading. 
um, again for the year on year for February. But look, the headline figure for the month on month, we are expecting a 0.8% increase. Uh, for the core CPI, month on month, uh, a 0.5%, uh, uh, a tick lower. So uh, a, a, small, a small move lower by 0.25%. Sorry, 0.5%. Uh, also, we have the ECB press uh, ECB taking the stage, of course. Look, we don't expect much from the ECB um, uh, this this uh, this week, uh, as they that they are they have said that they are continually assessing, obviously, the situation that's occurring in Russia right now. Now, just quickly over to the charts. Look, there's been. Uh, quite a few moves uh, occurring over the look. I'm going to kick off with oil actually. Look, so oil. This is the um, uh, Brent uh, Brent crude chart, and this is the WTI chart, both on the daily time frame. Now, as you can see from WTI, we are attacking supply. We have attacked supply, should I say? At 126.44, 122.58. As you can see, we have stabbed the upper edge of this area, which could lead us to as far north as resistance at 131.96 dollars a barrel. Should we pull back? Uh, with the in WTI, I will be I will be looking at this support at 111.82, uh, which co coincides with an ascending channel um, resistance turned support uh, area around this point here. So look, on, w, uh, on uh, the Brent crude chart, let me just expand this so we can all see, we did gap higher. Now with that, Western technicians will, will label this a, a, a upward gap, right? Or, or a rising gap. But the um, from the Japan the Japanese would would label this a rising window. Regardless of what you what term you uh, 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 choose, a rising window or a, or a rising gap can provide resistance. Now, uh, sorry, support in in this sense in in this case. So look, should we close higher without filling today's gap? We do have a rising window present between one nineteen seventy four one twenty three sixty, which could provide uh, support going forward and maybe even see price attack the uh, resistance at 139.38 um, uh, level. Now, just, just to give you some uh, perspective of the, the move of this market uh, in, in, recent, in recent trading, we are now at levels. Uh, let me just get my crosshairs on, just bear with me. We are now at levels not seen since mid-2008. It's just a parabolic move right now uh, in the oil markets, as you can see. So last week, we were up by nearly 20%. It's just insane moves we are seeing right now. So just going back. Um, yeah, so just be aware of this rising window. This is a key area. Should we close higher, of course. Now, the rising window, as you can see, is formed by the high point here and the low point, which is ascent, uh, the current low point of the candle, um, assuming we do close lower. Okay, and on to gold really quickly. Gold is steaming higher this morning. Uh, we have taken out this resistance area at 1959, 1974. Now, this was a key note in, in previous uh, recordings, uh, sorry, uh, live sessions. As you can see, we have, as, 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 as I've just said, we have pushed through this area. Uh, to, to, the, to the left of price, uh, this is the daily time frame, by the way, to the, the left of price between the one, uh, 1992 and not, uh, 2015 high, this is consumed supply for me, which means it's very weak. It's, um, it's gonna, it, it will have bearish, I mean, there will be, sell, there will be sellers um, at these highs, I believe. But whether they're enough to halt the upside momentum we're seeing right now is, is very unlikely, in my opinion, yeah, uh, 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 of course. But this is, for me, this is a weak area, which will lead us right the way up to the um, August 2020 high of 2075. Now, I did mention in, in a couple of, um, in a couple of uh, uh, market reports that we do have a symmetrical triangle forming on the daily time frame. Uh, we did break higher and we did retest the upper boundary and we have continued higher. Now, should this pattern play out as per its uh, technical arrangements, if you will, we could be looking as far north as 2105 in terms of a profit objective. Now with this resistance area, now a support area, I've labeled uh, it here, uh, if this resistance area does indeed uh, uh, turn support, 
and support buyers, we could be looking at a possible completion of this symmetrical triangle. Now, in terms of the moving averages, we do have also have the 50 day SMA crossing above the 200 day SMA, uh, which means in, in trading parlance, if you will, uh, we do, we are seeing what's known as a golden cross, which essentially tells us that there are bullish implica uh, bullish um, a bullish indication um, uh, within this market. So do be aware of this support area at 1959.1974. Now, just quickly, dollar index. We are we're now we're now above this weekly trend line uh, support term resistance. You know, I, I did expect some form of reaction from here technically. But we haven't, we didn't get that. I mean, it put up a little fight, to be honest. And uh, look, we are higher now. So, with this being said, going back to the daily time frame, we are now overbought on the daily time frame, and we have actually formed an AB equals CD to the upside on the RSI. But look, we are overbought. But for as as many experienced technicians will know, the RSI um, can remain overbought for long periods of time in uptrending. Uh, environment as we are seeing here since the uh, since mid May of 2021 we have uh, we have penciled in clear higher highs and higher lows um, uh, since since connecting with this support at 89.69 again guys I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned it this is the daily time frame of the US dollar index now the US dollar index is a geometrically average weighted um, dollar value against six major foreign uh, currencies, including the euro, the the uh, the Japanese yen, and the pound. Now, the euro controls the uh, the majority of the weight at fifty seven point six percent. The Japanese yen, look, I, ca I cannot remember the percentages off hand, but I think it's around twelve to thirteen percent, and and sterling, I think it's around eleven percent. But I know that they're, they're the top three. Anyway, so we are seeing higher prices. As I said, we, ha we have taken out this weekly trend line support term resistance at this point here. And look, if we continue higher, I do expect resistance on the daily time frame at 100.91, 100.32 to make an entrance, uh, potentially even this week, should we continue higher. Okay, on to the, in, in, in the, in terms of the major currency pairs, look, we are for those for those who who watched the previous uh, market reports, you will note that I, I did highlight a a, a a clear bearish picture on the euro dollar long term. Now, with that being said, I, I did I noted that there was a trend line support uh, taken at this point here. I noted that there were lows taken at uh, uh, taken out at uh, this point here. And I also noted that we retested this resistance area at 1473.1583. Now, with that being said, the euro, ha I did not expect it to, to drop quite as aggressively. But look, on Friday, we, let me just get my crosshairs. Look, on Friday, we, we, we lost almost a whopping 3%. We closed lower 3% uh, on the euro dollar. I'm oh, sorry, last week, excuse me, last week. Um, and, and now, look, we're on the doorstep of uh, a quasi modest support at 0778, the weekly time frame. This is, guys, weekly time frame. Um, so look, this is somewhere I would be watching this week. 0778 support. Again, this is this is um, uh, pandemic levels. This is when the coronavirus kicked in, and um, we we started seeing a rally in the euro, and obviously a a decline in the dollar. Uh, so look, 0778 on the weekly time frame. Do pencil this in. It could potentially um, be somewhere we see buyers attempt to make a showing. Now, look, on the daily time frame, we, we remain below the 200-day simple moving average in line with our weekly, project, uh, our weekly trend. And we have remained below the uh, trend line resistance since uh, the mid-2021. Mid the more immediate, we have seen price nosedive through support at 0.941, 110 and have recent and have as as of today tested the decision point at 0788054 as you can see we are reacting from the area but nothing to really get excited about at this point now in terms of the relative strength index as you can see on the daily time frame for anyone that's not aware of the uh, what the relative strength index or RSI is it's simply a gauge of momentum a gauge of price speed on your traded, uh, it gives you the relative strength of the of your traded market. It's not relative strength as in the ratio divided between two markets. 
this is the relative strength of um, of your of your of an individual market. Uh, so it's the average gains against average losses. And as you can see right now, we are over oversold and we are close to support at twenty one eighty seven. Now this could this could I emphasize the word could this could um, indicate we may see buyers come into the market. But as I said, if you remember on the dollar index, we are overbought. We are oversold on the um, uh, we're up. We are oversold within a downtrending environment, which can lead the RSI to remain oversold for prolonged periods and, and produce a number of four signals. So this is something that newer traders will want to take into account uh, before before entering into buy signals on 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 the RSI exiting oversold. Just something to be aware of. Um, in terms of the shorter term time frames, this is the H4 chart, the H1 chart. Look, we are we. Think. No, we haven't tested, but we do have resistance at 0903 on the H, H4 to be aware of. And also prime support at 0785, 0820 on the H4 to be aware of. These are more immediate areas. Now, look, this was a pennant pattern I, I uh, marked up on Sunday. I thought this would be something good to talk about. I didn't expect such a, um, such a volatile opening. I should have expected it, I guess. Um, but look, we have broken out to the downside of this pennant. And look, for any for any chart pattern traders will know, I you know I actually took the pole, I guess you would say, the downside movement from this point here, and extended it from the breakout point at this point here, which leads us down all the way down to just beyond uh, the 108 figure. Now, as you can see, we have just recently I can't see without my crosshairs. Just bear with me. Um, we did just, uh, we came within the whisker of the 109 handle and have since leveled off. Look, should we continue lower? Do keep an eye on the 108, uh, 108 level, which as you can see, sits within the H4 prime support mentioned, just mentioned, uh, just uh, a minute ago at 0785, 0820. Now really quickly onto the Aussie dollar. Look, this prime support has has it surprised me. I, I have to be honest; it really did surprise me. The prime support on the weekly time frame at zero uh, 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 69, 68, 72, 42. I really believed that this uh, prime support was hanging by a thread, uh, given the lackluster bullish um, the lackluster bullish uh, uh, environment we were seeing. But look, if you look closely, we do also have what's known as a double bottom pattern forming. This is one leg. This is two leg. This would be your neckline. So we do actually have a double, a double top, a double bottom. Excuse me, a double bottom forming on the weekly time frame. Now, look. Let me just mark up the um, the. Bear with me. Let me just mark up the profit objectives that we would be looking at. So I would be taking it from the lowest point within the double top um, to the neckline, and then extending from the neckline. Look. So if we do continue higher. On the Aussie dollar, we could complete the double top pattern, which means we may remove this resistance on the weekly time frame at 75.01 and shake hands with prime resistance at 78.49, uh, 75.99. So this is just something to be aware of, guys. Now, in terms of the daily time frame, we are now testing trend line resistance. Now, let me just expand this chart so we can all see where we are. Now, we are testing trend. We are at this point, testing trend line resistance. Now, this is quite a major trend line resistance taken from, uh, I believe it's the high 08, uh, 8007. Look, we have, but, you know, in in support of a uh, the bullish showing being seen on the weekly time frame, we did take out this trend line resistance taken from, I, I believe it's the high of 78, excuse me, guys, 78, uh, 95 or 78. 7890-ish. And also we closed above the 200-day simple moving average, which for many technicians uh, who follow moving averages will will believe this is a will will believe this is a um, a bullish indication. So with that being said, this almost does confirm the bullish showing we're seeing on the weekly time frame. Look, if we do over overthrow this um this trend line resistance on the daily time frame, this will be a a, 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 a clear indication for me technically that we are likely to touch gloves with this resistance with the weekly resistance let me just with the weekly resistance at 71 uh 7501 excuse me 
Okay, on to the short term charts. I don't really have much to go on right now. We do have resistance around 74.51 to be aware of on the H4 time frame and a support at 70. Uh, 73 68 73 43 again this is on the h4 time frame look short term action we are currently seeing buyers and sellers squaring off between a trend line support term resistance taken from the low of uh, 7097 and the 74 uh, 74 the figure now onto the dollar yen look not much change on the the bigger picture from last from last week at all. In fact, we still re we remain uh, the 1.272% Fibonacci projection on the weekly time frame at 116.09 remains a clear headwind in this market for now, despite the uh, the uptrend visible uh, since clear uptrend visible since uh, the beginning of 2021. Now, in turn, in in conjunction with the uptrend, just just to Hopefully this will serve as a reminder for those uh, who may have forgot the uh, uh, previous presentation. We we do have an ascending we do have an ascending um, triangle forming on the daily time frame, which should it break out to the upside could um, project further upside um, in this market. Now again, back onto the H four time frame. For anyone that's following my uh, market analysis, will know I'm I'm actually absolutely in love with the dollar yen H four time frame right now. It's an A B equals C D heaven. So for any for any harmonic traders present, you'll know this is the simplest, uh, the the most simplest harmonic uh, configuration uh, within the harmonic uh, the harmonic field, if you will. So as as you can see right now, I hope you can see we had maybe equal CD bearish formation uh, that terminated at daily quasi-modo resistance at one sixteen thirty three. Now the reaction from this area actually formed another AB equal CD bullish formation that terminated here. Uh, conveniently at the 61.8% Fibonacci ratio, which is the second, usually considered the second take profit target from the, the larger AB equals CD bearish formation. Now look, just, just more, more immediate, we do have a potential AB, let me just get the AB equals CD tool on just so it's clear if you guys, from this point A to there to B to C right the way down to here. Okay, so we have a potential. I've marked this with green arrows there and there. So look, we have an A, B, C, D. <clears throat> Possible A, B equals C, D formation to the downside. Now, in, in, in conjunction with this, we also have a double top pattern coming in around the 115, 115.80 area. Now, we did, as you can probably see, the neckline, neckline point is here at 114.70. We have recently shook hands with this level. But as you can see, we have failed to break below it. Should we break below it? Should we close below this area decisively? We could be then be looking at this decision point on the uh, H4 at 113.54, 113.78, which, as you can see, the take profit. So I've labeled, so I've got the take profit target from the highest point within the double top pattern to the neckline extended from the uh, potential breakout point. And that lines up with that decision point at here. Uh, look, conveniently, the AB equals CD uh, 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 bullish pattern also lines up with this area as well. So this is certainly a, a scenario to be aware of this week. Uh, it may or may not play out, of course. Um, but look, the break below the neckline of the double top pattern will be an early cue. We are likely heading lower uh, potentially to this area. Finally, just on the pound. At one point, I do want to highlight that the pound is steaming lower this morning. Absolutely steaming lower. Look, on the weekly time frame, let me just zoom in. Uh, look, we are so very, very close to the double top, top um, the double top patterns break, uh, excuse me, guys, the double top patterns profit objective um, at uh, 3090, at around 3090. Um, and this was formed from the double top pattern was formed from the highs of 4241, as you can see at this point here. The interesting thing is on the week, on the daily time frame, we also have quasi-modo support coming in at 31, uh, 31.19, which aligns almost to the pip, higher time frames, I guess, to the pip with the double tops uh, uh, take profit objective. So do be aware of this level. We are very close to this level right now. Um, and, and also the RSI is, is testing the oversold region as we speak. Now, we have seen just in recent hours, we have seen that the, 
the dollar yen cross below the 132 handle on the H1 time frame. Uh, this this is an instant cue that we, we are going to complete this A B equals C D alternate pattern on the H4 time frame. Now this comes in at the 1.272% Fibonacci projection at 31.43. Do be aware of this area, guys. This could produce could be could be an area we see buyers attempt to come in from. Again, another harmonic formation. This was coined by Scott Carney. Scott Carney, um, do do search for this uh, uh, guy on on the net. He's an absolute wizard with um, with the harmonics. <clears throat> this was actually, I, I believe, the AB equals CD is actually his uh, invention, if you will. Uh, so look, the AB equals CD alternate pattern. It's just essentially it's an extended D leg to the equivalent AB equals CD. Nothing more. Um, so yeah, do keep an eye on this uh, thirty one forty three area. Now, guys, that's all I have for you this uh, 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 this Monday. Do trade safe. It's a very volatile market right now. Um, and look, any questions, any comments, um, any suggestions, please do send them to either the market analyst at fpmarkets.com. That will go that will go direct to our research team. Alternatively, just consider just consider sending our support team an e email at um, support at fpmarkets. Dot com. Now with that, have a fantastic week ahead. Again, trade safe and I'll uh, catch you in the uh, 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 again on Monday. Thank you so much, guys.